Okay. All right. Now, what are you going to see? Um, the letter of expectation asks for drafts to start the joint development process between staff and councillors. Um, what you'll be seeing over co coming months will be just that, drafts that frame the issues and challenges. Um, there won't be any last minute fait accompli rubber stamp. This is a genuine joint development process. What comes with that? Um, there will be work to, to join things up and to bring costs down. It will, be, it, it will be iterative. We will have to circle back at times to something and go, we need another look at that. Um, no one has ever built a final LTP a year out. Okay, so we are starting with raw material, draft material. All right, so on that basis, um, the first activity plans are libraries and community housing. Carolyn has presented um, on the directions for libraries since the very first joint development in 2005. So you're in experienced hands. What she's gonna do is step you through the high points of her activity plan, uh, particularly any changes, increases, decreases, and at least half the session will be left aside for Q&A so you can understand where she's coming from, probe, ask questions, and perhaps ask for further information or wherever you wanna take that plan. So that's, that's the very draft stage that we're at, okay? Are there any questions before we kick off? Okay, I'll hand over to Carolyn Robertson. Just Kia ora koutou katoa. Thank you. That was slightly terrifying, Peter, saying that about 2005. <laughs> I queried that when he said it the other day, but he's sticking to his story. So there we are. <laughs> um, thank you very much, councillors and Mia, for the opportunity to present our draft our draft activity plan for libraries. Uh, it's been um, it's been a very good process pulling this together to this stage, and we're very keen to uh, to really uh, get your feedback, your questions, and your your reaction really to uh, what I'm going to present. So uh, I'll make sure that we've got plenty of time for questions. I really just want to step through, as Peter says, uh, some key points, and um, and then um, have got plenty of time for conversation with you if that's um, uh, if that's okay. Okay, so. What so and, and I'm assuming you, you may or may not have had a chance to have a look at this yet, uh, but this is a very typical. This is a template format. So um, what the plan starts with what what are, what are libraries about, uh, what do we deliver, and why. Uh, so you can see on that uh, initial page there, our, our services are, or our activity is really made up of, and this will be no surprise, uh, collections and in, in all formats, community spaces access to information and support for, for um, professional service and programming and events. So really that is, that is uh, at the heart of what um, the library service is about. And just a snapshot of use there, um, that's hard to see on the screen, but if you've got it in front of you, I just want to note, so that was for the previous year, we have just got the year end statistics uh, since, um, since this was um, uh, uh, locked down, we've, we've got the latest statistics and really just, and so we will update the plan with those. Uh, but really just to say, we um, the year end, it's very pleasing to see that actually reflects coming out of COVID. So uh, visitation um, has gone up from 2.75 um, million visitors in their physical libraries to 3.44. So that's the year end figure on visits. Uh, there's, there's changes to all those stats, but and probably the other one really to note is programming. So that's gone from 119 um, at the end of the previous year to... Um, to 199, just under 200,000 program attendees. So what we're seeing is the community is really embracing returning to their libraries and re-engaging uh, following the period of COVID, COVID-related restrictions. Uh, so probably that's all to comment on there. Uh, and this just, uh, and also the other key point is uh, we have a very, according to the resident survey data, um, uh, people, uh, citizens are satisfied Overall, we have a high satisfaction rate. You'll be aware of that from, from previous information provided um, with our services. There's always plenty of room for improvement uh, and, and our customers tell us, or citizens tell us very clearly what they would like and what they value and also what they would like us to do more of. Um, nevertheless, that is, uh, we have sustained a, a good level of customer satisfaction. So uh, the next section, uh, section two, um, really links what libraries do and the services that, that are provided in libraries with the community outcomes and the strategic directions. 
and you can see there what we what this is showing is that we um, we've developed a, or proposing a rate well as a rating system. Uh, really, where do we feel that um, libraries play the most significant role in actually supporting councils? Uh, community outcomes and strategic direction. So, uh, and with a little bit of a description, high level description of how we uh, believe we do that. So clearly a co collaborative confidence city and a cultural powerhouse city are the two that most strongly align. But of course, um, there, are, there are definitely connections with the other community outcomes there. And for strategic priorities, uh, the inclusivity and, and equity aspect. So that um, strategic priority for council uh, we map quite a lot of what we do into that space. That's very core to the role of a public library. Uh, and also, but also um, there, are, there are three other key areas there um, around uh, being, being a, an attractor, um, our facilities being an attractor and a destination, and, um, and, and the unique heritage collections also being part of cultural identity. And that um, the importance of partnerships that um, for, for libraries to be successful and embedded in the community, it's very important that we collaborate and partner with the community. It's really th these are these are their services. So doing that together is really key, and that's a continued growth growth area for libraries. Um, and to balance the needs of today with the future. So the, the forward planning and and um, it's not only about technology, but it really is all sorts of aspects, diversity and sustainability. There's lots of themes that link to that. I'll just move past that. And really on climate resilience, so this is this is definitely a bigger section uh, in this plan than it has been um, certainly for libraries in the past. And again, uh, there's a format there. So really what we were what we needed to think about was um, what are the key sources of greenhouse gas emissions for our for, for libraries activity? Clearly the electricity or power use in, in library facilities and the use of fossil fuels in the both the mobile and the other library vehicles are key ones. And there, there are more there that you can read. Uh, so we're outlining what they are and then what, um, what we've identified as, as mitigations or ways to manage that. And also the set, and then the second part of that um, page talks about climate risks for library activity. And then again, we've, um, we've had a go at, um, at identifying mitigations. Uh, all this would be great to get feedback on, um, on your thinking on this. And there is more information about climate resilience and, and what libraries need to be doing in the asset management plan. Uh, I might just go to the following slide. So this page here, 3.2, this was a, a new <coughs> section in our plan um, this time, uh, which is really about the impact, uh, to identify what we think are impact issues. So doing the forward planning across the 10 years, uh, what do we think are the really significant uh, areas and or issues? And, and just, a, a, I guess, a first think about mitigations. Uh, so we've identified four for libraries. Um, and so equity and access, which I touched on before, identity and social inclusion, charity partnerships, so that there are treaty partnerships, and, uh, and technological growth. Uh, there's a lot in there, I know. Perhaps we should have tried to control ourselves <laughs> and had fewer. But um, I think that's that really for the library service and thinking about where we are now and the challenges that lay ahead for us and, and perhaps the, the shape of the services for the future um, and what's, society, what's happening in society. These were the areas that kind of landed, the themes that landed for us. And you'll see in the back of the activity plan there's also a risk section. Uh, it doesn't cover all this in detail, but um, it does. Um, it, it points to some of these these issues as well. Okay, and then back back to the levels of service. So start at the very beginning with what are those levels of service, and here's a little bit more detail. There's a lot of detail in Appendix A. So if any of you want to want to actually get into the nitty gritty, uh, you can you can refer to Appendix A in the back of the plan uh, for the methods of measurement, uh, historic performance, and future targets. This is really just giving you a snapshot of how they, um, the levels of service, uh, how, we, how we measure them against the, so the community spaces, the collections, uh, the information, access to information and programs and events, and noting that there are 12 community levels of service and four management or more sort of internal or operational um, in, in that. So that, that, that's, that's really how we um, actually measure and ensure that we are doing what, um, what, we, what we set out to do. Uh, section five is on assets. So as I said, that, that there is a separate asset management plan. This is the, really a, the high level um, summary here. And I'm just going to refer to my notes so that I don't miss anything out on that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's 
it's no surprise, of course, we know that since the earthquakes, there's been a massive replacement. There's been new buildings, there's been replacements, uh, there's been major repairs to the library portfolio of buildings. And so that's reflected. You can see that we'll see the detail of that in the in the asset management plan. Um, so that's a yeah, kind of a no-brainer comment, but just to, to point that out. Uh, yes, we do still have some older buildings for sure, and um, are doing um, being really good at doing condition assessments to help drive the replacement and renewal program is really important. Um, but also we have got a lot of fairly new buildings, which are probably all going to come up for, for work around the same time, actually. Uh, also, that uh, it's been council's focus for a good while now and increasingly on, on hubbing and co-locating our council services together so we can see that with all our newer, newer facilities. Uh, libraries are just a part of, um, uh, of a range of council services and I think we've been getting quite creative in what we've been putting together. Um, the citizens tell us very clearly that this is a, re a real benefit to actually have the kind of one-stop shop or consolidated approach. And of course, it's more economic and, and I think sensible from, for council investment too. So that, that, um, this is really just giving you a, a snapshot of, the, of how assets are managed, how the renewal program works. Um, looking forward, being guided very much by council um, strategies, the infrastructure strategy. Uh, within libraries, we have had, it's pretty much near, nearing the end of its life, but a, a library, um, what was called the uh, 2025 facilities plan that has guided a lot of the development that has happened over, over the last 10 years or so. And just to signal there, um, looking ahead in this um, LTP uh, South Library, the um, earthquake repair renewal, a project for South Library and also Turanga. Uh, this is a replacement and renewal for Turanga, but being such a big facility, when it comes up to the 10 year mark, there will be, um, there will be a, there's a bit of a spike um, in, in there. Uh, not massive, but I mean, it, it will need renewal um, of some of its basic, um, basic fabric. So that's the asset section. And uh, really, probably that, that ties on very nicely just to a snapshot in, in section six of capital expenditure. Um, so what's proposed uh, at the moment and looking at that, um, looking at that over the 10 years. And um, section seven is operational budget. And this is, as you can see there, and you'll be aware, is based on uh, the current plan. So this is the current annual plan budget at the moment um, because the budgets, operational budgets are still um, being built. So just to give you a snapshot there. And I think probably that is that is about it. Uh, it's a very quick once over lightly. I know of what's in there. As I said, there is um, there are there is more information in the plan. There is the appendix A, which gives you the detail of the level of levels of service, and uh, there is also more information around those impact issues. Uh, if you want to read more on that, and there's a risk, uh, a very brief risk um, register at the back for libraries. So I think probably a good idea for me to pause uh, and um, and take take questions. Feedback would be very welcome, please. Victoria Sam and Yanni. Thank you very much. As a new councillor, there's a lot of information coming at us uh, as we head into this long-term plan. So from my perspective, I like to be able to understand what's changed for you significantly since you last did your long-term plan and what are the things that we really need to shine the spotlight on and give consideration for. Thank you very much. And I realise that I, in my excitement, I've just whipped straight <laughs> past the, the changes. So uh, that's a really good point. Sorry about that. Um, yes, the, it's pretty steady state overall. Um, so there aren't any major changes proposed to the levels of service. My apologies for not covering this off. I had it in my head. Um, that they're minor. They, we've got a ref refresh of a number of targets uh, and an adjustment to methods of measurement. But there's nothing major, nothing major being removed or um, or added to the level of service from the current LTP. Uh, we've got one new target, um, which we which is relating to programs and events, which is around the delivery of Kopapa Māori programs, because that's an, that's a real growth. The demand in that space is increasing. Uh, it reflects our council's Tauriti partnership and also the strengthening communities together strategy. Um, to to be uh, increasing that level of engagement with Māori. It's not something we haven't been doing, but we just haven't really separated out and made explicit uh, what how much we're doing and, and, and what that delivery looks like. Um, so it's, um, it's important within libraries. It's not a new level of service, though. So just wanted to note that. And possibly another one just to pick up on is a, a, we came and um, talked to 
I talked to you in a few months ago about changes to uh, the mobile library service. So there's a tweak in the mobile library service uh, measurement um, to go from, in terms of how we actually, um, the target is from 40 hours per week uh, to 50 to 60 visits per week. And if you recall, um, with that, um, the, the new model that we're implementing throughout this year, uh, rather than it being um, just about uh, visits to different stops around the city, it's going to be a mixture of home delivery and visiting rest homes and social housing complexes and still doing some of those, um, th those uh, traditional stops. So it's just to really, it's, it's not a biggie, but it's just to make sure that this, the way we're measuring it is, is reflecting the service that we're providing or will be providing um, fully uh, from the beginning of the new LTP. Thank you for that. Yeah, my apologies. I, I raced. I raced past that. But <clears throat> you always have good presentations. Um, Sam. Yeah. Hey. Thank you for that. That's a really good presentation. Uh, probably two things. Um, the first one is just do you have a view on? Um, I'll be interested in your thoughts around like external funding. So how you can maximise government funding. I know we've talked in the past. Certainly with your team, we've been over to to run around some of the um, Pacifica funding they've been able to get and things like that. Yes. What's your sort of view on how that will play out for the next next wee while? Uh, I think we need to keep pursuing it. And uh, there's plenty. It's really very much in that programming and events space, probably particularly the programming, where we can actually attract um, central government funding uh, across a, in, in, a, in a range of different areas, actually. Uh, so I, it, it's, a, it's the partnerships. I cannot overemphasize the importance of those partnerships. Uh, where we work with um, schools and, and other agencies. Not all of them, of course, attract external funding, but we've, we've got some well-established ones that, that actually do. And so I think it's about us ensuring, without increasing the size of the fiscal envelope, mm. saying how, do we can, how can we direct our resourcing, our staffing and our energies into, um, into, into those areas so that we can actually deliver. Yep. Um, okay. So yeah, so some of the things are quite explicit. I mean, Ministry of Pacific Peoples, um, MOE, um, I've forgotten the name of the Erica who's sitting behind me might remember. No, um, the GCSN, uh, whatever that acronym mm. stands for. But anyway, definitely in that camp where we do secure funding. Okay. And, and other uh, other initiatives are um, where we do, where it's not so direct. It's not direct, but is the new history curriculum uh, again putting the energy into ensuring that our services adapt um, so that we're actually providing information to support. Okay. It's looking for opportunities and having those conversations and having the relationships that we can draw on, I think. No, that, that's useful. So just in terms of, I guess, that I'm thinking about Christchurch NZ and some other sort of places where there's been uh, government funding in the past and it's dried up, which kind of leaves them with some mm. fixed overhead. Are, are we in that situation or is, is basically, so we haven't increased, I guess, the, the size of the team without that external funding or are we at a point now where there, there's kind of is no external funding and it's being paid for out of the normal pot, so to speak? It, it it does come and go, to be honest. We've certainly had periods. I mean, um, I know that Council Scandal will remember South Library and the, and the funding that we had from the ministry for a number of years, operational funding that supported. And we've had a number of other schemes that have been smaller than that, but still significant. It's about it's about looking for the opportunities. Yeah. I had one in my head a moment ago, and it's just oh, it's if okay. I if I come back to no, it, no I will worries. I will let you know. Uh, but we do need to stay well connected about what the opportunities are there. And also, it's about talking to our council colleagues to be aware about funding sources that might there might be a library dimension to something that council's tapping okay. into, maybe in the, in the community development um, area, for example. Oh, that's useful. Yeah. And probably just the only other one, really quickly, is just around like demand management. So, are we going to have a look at, um, you know, I think of like Fendleton Library, for example, when you talk to the librarians there, they kind of go from seven to eight. Sometimes there's no one comes in at all. Are we going to have a look at that as part of this sort of process? That's very, very much up to to council to yeah if 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 you wish to um then well it would just be good to understand it from a operational point of view so yeah we can certainly provide data to help inform um any any area that you wish to look into okay cool thank you Yanni uh, <clears throat> thank you I was just wondering how you um how you work out the building size to the population density and the capacity. Well, we work with the we work with the planners and the experts on um, on that. I think we've have we've got a pretty good feel for it now for the number that we have done. But we we do work closely with our planning colleagues um, to uh, around that and looking at benchmarking, uh, both with other facilities that we have um, we have built and also other other councils. So is it is it kind of a fair assumption that the higher the population density, the bigger the space would be? 
or the bigger the space should be? Simply speaking, yes, but there could be a number of factors there. It depends too on whether we are um, whether we are in co like you know what what is the nature of the service offering there, and what is right. the environment, and okay. what are the opportunities. But certainly, if it's a if it's a large population that we're trying to serve, whether it's about density or not, I'm I, not quite yeah. Sure. I mean, I guess maybe I'll be a bit more. Clear. So I guess it's what about I'm, the catchment? Probably. Right. I yes. guess what I'm interested to understand, like we've got a whole bunch of areas that are going to get intensive housing. Right. So how is the provision of existing services catering for the growth? Like what's the mechanism we have to address the growth that happens in those intense, intense intensification areas? Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a specific question about Limwood um, Library, just wanting to understand, we were going to do that as part of 2021 LTP, but I'm just trying to understand what the outstanding um, recommendation or action is around Limwood Library because I didn't see anything referenced and so I was keen to understand more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Yanni. Tara? Uh, the, um, in terms of the long-term planning, that's in integrated into DC. So at the <coughs> moment, we have... Belfast, mm -hmm. is that right? That's and, right, that's correct. Yes, yeah. that's, that's picked up on the infrastructure strategy. Yes, well, um, again, I think that's a considerable. We haven't got anything explicitly in there about in terms of replacement uh, at this stage. We did a service um, a service assessment a couple of years ago, uh, which was uh, assessing with the community whether this was working. The current arrangement in um, of leasing space in Lin in Eastgate Moor was working for them. We got a positive response to that. Um, we haven't, and it's really a matter of whether we need to be doing more planning. Uh, around uh, around developments in Linwood, working with with our planning colleagues. So, is, is it possible to copy the actual resolutions that we've passed around the Wood Library to date, just to understand where it got left? Because I, I can only find the one online that talks about the twenty twenty one LTP, but I appreciate there'll be other stuff that's happened since. Yes. But it would be good just to know what the time frame we were considering in terms of planning, um, and yeah, where where it's got to. But I do I do think there's some decisions we need we will need to make about. The land that we own there as well and i didn't get a sense from the activity management plan of any sort of strategic thinking about what's what what could be done so that would that would Thank be you. useful yes. um just uh, i guess the only other question would be around the the digital equity issue and how we're working across council and i, I guess i was quite surprised that you know enabled doing something with the housing trust and libraries doing something with spark and it just seemed kind of Kind of a bit strange that we don't take a, a, I don't know, a digital equity approach across the city to kind of work together. Is there a digital equity strategy that we have as a city or that you work to? Or how do we inform the investment that we make in that space? Which, because I think the libraries are doing really good work in that space. But I guess I'm just keen to know where the gaps are in terms of resourcing, if there's more we can do given mm. how significant that issue is becoming. I'm not sure whether there is a council-wide digital equity strategy. I'm not. We could. We would need to check on that. We could come back to you with information about the partnerships that we already have, because there's several of them in that space, and we do we do connect across uh, the organisation. But that might be useful to help identify whether there are any gaps. And sorry, just the the only other um, question I had was in regards to there's a number of um, activity management levels of service or or. Um, statements around, you know, um, making the libraries accessible. Um, what I was trying to understand is, do we understand who's using the library and conversely, who's not? So do we have demographic data on things like membership, both from a geogra geographic point of view and a, and a um, diversity point of view? There, there is, and not, it's not as good as it could be, to be honest. So uh, we do have some information through that membership data, but uh, around around both those points that you've made, uh, no. So when how could we how could we improve the understanding of who's not using the libraries to target those to encourage more use? I mean, we've done some good stuff around fines, I know, and, yes. and you know there might be other. We we do, we do from time to time do targeted surveys, but I think probably both through what you've mentioned with membership changing changing what and we've started to talk with um, monitoring and measurement about how we can actually improve uh, what we're collecting um, with the membership data, and the other one is more more targeted survey surveying. Thank you, Karen. So, we've got to move along. Um, Ty Tyrone, please. Um, kia ora, thank you. Um, so just in terms of like nothing changing, major nothing major changing. So does that mean that? because I don't know what, what the threshold of major is, 
<laughs> so um, in my ward, we've got Akaroa Library, Little River Library, yes. Diamond Harbour Library, Littleton Library, all different sort of shapes and sizes and yes. different locations. Is anything going to change there? Not that we're intending, no. <laughs> it's Because they do actually like, it's not always about bums on seats. No. Um, no. You know, they perform different functions for smaller communities, so they have to be, they're almost like, in my view, you know, sorry that the peninsula is different, but like, yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah. I think, um, can I just make a, make a comment on that? So we're not planning any, any change that would affect uh, or impact on the service to residents that we can foresee. There's nothing in this plan that's signalling that. Um, I think it's really, because we talk, we talk often about ourselves as a network, it's a network of libraries. It's, it's, it's large, it's across the metropolitan area and Banks Peninsula. We do a lot, of, uh, a lot to actually ensure that we're sort of providing a good centralised service around our collections and around our planning for programming and so on. That actually means that we're, we're thinking, about, thinking about that in a joined up way and also that we get as much consistency as possible around our policies and so on and yep. planning uh, for the benefit of all. However, that's also very important, critically important to reflect locally, uh, you know, to connect, to know for, for our library staff to know their own local communities, particularly in, in places like the peninsula, that's, that's very key. And to be ensuring that we are identifying and meeting needs of residents who live in um, outside the metropolitan area. Thank you, thank you. So I think it's a bit of a mixture of, of them both. <laughs> I think we've kind of got it captured in here, but if there's anything that you would like to see more expressly, then that's a, that would be a great thing to um, hear. Thank yeah, that, you. No, that's good. Um, yep, and they are just a drop in the ocean anyway, but thank you. Hey, Mark. Thank you. Um, I'm just interested to tease out a little bit further um, Sam's inquiry about central government funding. Um, and my, my sort of questioning is more around a specific example, Maratiki yes. Morby Centre. And have we reached out and got any um, MOE buy-in um, to helping to operate that facility right opposite the the major high school? High schools. Not not that I'm aware of in terms of actually explicitly getting funding from the, from the Ministry of Education. I think you probably know there's a lot of engagement with the local schools in the area and about yeah. what, you know, to, to really promote and make sure that they're reactive participants. But uh, yeah. I'm not aware that we have sought external funding. Yeah. And I'm just looking at Mary in case there's anything coming through from Rec and Sport, but not from, not from libraries. Yeah, because that—I mean, from my point of view as a local council, it looks to me like a perfect opportunity for us to MOE, maybe a Ministry of Sport, um, yes. and try and get some sort of you know, um, buy-in there where they can recognise the the value that we're bringing to their um, schools and yes. Um, yes. and help with that process would be quite. Thank handy. you. Oh, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Okay, and Tim. Thank you. Um, the first, I've got two questions. First one is probably not to be answered now, but it would be very good to know the, um, that society's changing levels of what's accepted treatment of council staff, um, your concerns in, with regards to safety for staff and the growing cost of security, etc. So that I think would be a good understanding for us to, to get a better understanding of, mm. um, obviously not for today. Thank you. Um, the second one, um, which is dear to my heart, is... Um, Literacy, literacy. When we talk about with regards to um, those who are coming to libraries and those who aren't, mm. and there's also a difference there to those who are coming just to grab a CD or a video rather than raise the the bar. So, are we are there opportunities with regards to partnering with government agencies? I mean, just raising the literacy, or even just opening a book. Yes, right. yes, absolutely, and that, that's that's a key uh, an ongoing discussion really with with other agencies uh, and initiatives. I mean, through Na we partner through National Library. Uh, there are, I mean, again, we could probably come back and give a bit more information. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling the the lack of Pat Street beside me just in terms <laughs> yeah. of some of the ones no, that yeah. we're yeah. we're talking uh, talking to and work and working with there around mm. that. So uh, summertime reading challenge is one that's just popped into my head that we do every year. Uh, that, that's a national program as well. So uh, that early literacy is absolutely and utterly key. And it's you know we know that the numbers are looking a bit terrifying. It's not it's yeah. not looking you know those literacy rates are dropping. So anything that we can do. We do um, target, and that was the, the question too about um, people who are not using us now. Uh, our, part of our outreach programs are to get out into those, um, including sort of lower decile um, preschools mm. and 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 some schools schools for the early 
um, the, the, the new entrants uh, to really have pro taking, taking the library service out to the community as a key component of what we do because we know that some people coming being visits to the library is not part of what some families do. Reading in the home is not part of what families do. And are there links with, say, private agency or providers like Seabrook McKenzie and others? Because is, is, is some of those families that may not be attending, obviously, yes. those, yeah, it's... Do you do you kind of link up with those private providers? I know it's a specialist theory and it's it's not, not really core, but I'm not I'm not I'm not sure actually. Okay. But I, look, it, it it could be helpful if council would like. I mean, we could come back, we could provide you some look, information, or we could come great. back and um, talk yeah, to Sorry you to about. put you on the spot now. And yeah. Look, it's a great document. Thank you very much. And um, the programs that were run and that are run in South Library are outstanding. So well thank done. you. Okay, and uh, Aaron, please. Yeah. So just just a couple of questions around. Um, as we go forward, and it's a LTP coming up, uh, are we brave enough to ask the public what's our fit for size library number? Because um, I've just done some global searching, and it seems we we are quite well libraried, as as you'll know. Um, and I've gone through quite a few. We are the most libraried of all the cities I've looked at, out of San Francisco, London, and gone for more spread out ones like Gold Coast, who are one library per 49,000, we're one per 20,000. Um, so A, the size, and then B, the opening hours. Um, and, and would we ask the question, should Turanga be open longer and others less, or do we have too many? Uh, so those questions there, is, would that be something we'd consider? I think it, it. I think it really. It's up to, with great respect, it's up to council to to um, give us a steer um, on on that. Yeah, I, I mean, but you you run the library, so you yes. know way more about it than yes. certainly I do. Well, what? So, so I mean, I'm just after your opinion on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we we know. I mean, it's it, it's always a juggling act, isn't it? We know that we know that people, even with the smaller libraries and council, seen this and in 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 past years. If uh, proposals to close a library uh, is, is always there's always strong <coughs> the, the, pushback. Sorry, the, this is real valid, but we'll, we'll probably need to come back to that because it, yeah. it it will filter down to staffing and stuff like that. So we just need to okay. get where, where we're doing it. Thank you, um, Pauline. Please. Yeah, I hope this hasn't been asked, but Turanga coming up for renewal and replacement twenty nine thirty. That's quite early, isn't it? It it's, it it ties in with what is in the ten year. That there are there are some things that get replaced at ten years if they need it. So if they need it is a really important qualifier. But some okay. some some um, some items get replaced at ten years and others at twenty years. There's so, a fairly well established uh, kind of framework for that guides that um, for our facilities teams. But again, if something is not if, if it's not worn out, and we've got plenty of examples of where we've We've held off a lot longer in some of our libraries if if they are not worn out. Um, so uh, but we you, would look. But at you're that. not talking about the actual building itself. No, no, no. I'm no. sorry. No, no everything in it and the it's the, it's the materials. It might be the HVAC. It could be the lighting. It could be the um. It, it could be um soft coat. So soft was furnishings. it open in 2019? 2018. So when will we get a steer on what that level of expenditure is likely to look like? Well, we've got some we've got some thinking that's been plugged in. I'm just looking at Paul Dad, some in, into the um, into the capital budgets there, based on what our normal program of uh, of replacement and renewal of some of those items are. There's a there's a ten year period where where um, items will be replaced, and some of them, and, and then another one is a twenty year period. It may be that um, it's fine, but we need we the, again it'll be around the condition assessments mm. for the building and the and and its um, the items in it that lead up to that that will inform whether we need that money then or whether we yeah. it can be. So, of course, my other question is to staff. I mean, are we depreciating, are we charging depreciation for this? And that's another question I've got right throughout the annual plan, actually, because I think we've underfunded for that. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of questions. Thank you very much. It's always very clear and concise. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. So.